Hey there, Algebra 2. Today, uh, the lesson is called Quotients of Square Roots. So in our first example, we have here the square root of 48 divided by the square root of 6. Now, just like in multiplication, um, you can divide different roots. When you add and subtract, you cannot combine unless it's the same root. It's kind of like like terms, but multiplying and dividing, you can. So, for this problem, what you can go ahead and do is just divide top divided by bottom. So, 6 goes into 48. So, 48 divided by 6 is going to be root 8. So, when you divide, the root is still there, and now we can break down the square root of 8, which would be 4 times 2, square root of 4. When we take that out, it becomes a 2 leaving us with a 2 still underneath. So again, uh, this will be our final answer. So again, uh, you could divide straight down if they both have a root above them. So 48 divided by 6 is 8. We still have the root over the 8, and then we can break that down. So another problem, let's go ahead and throw in a variable there. So you have 54 over x to the 7th, sorry, 54x to the 7th over 2x squared. Okay, and those are both rooted. Again, with the coefficients, you're going to divide. So 54 divided by 2 is going to give us 27. And remember, in the past, we went over, if you have variables top and bottom, the same variable, you subtract the exponents. So this is going to be 7 minus 2, which is 5. So now we have root 27x to the 5th. Now we can break this down, this 27, to be 9 times 3. And like in... A couple lessons ago, we could break down x to the fifth to be x to the fourth times x. And now when we take the square root of 9, that gives us a 3. The square root of x to the fourth becomes x squared, leaving us with 3x underneath the root. Okay, We left the 3 and the x underneath the root. So that's our final answer. So again, when you have variables top and bottom that are the same, you subtract the exponent. And then once we get 27x to the fifth, we're able to break that down and simplify that. Okay? So that's our first example. Let's do another example two. Now, if this one, if the numerator actually doesn't have a root, but the bottom does, we need to rationalize the denominator. So again, we're going to try to rationalize the denominator. There are two ways of doing this. Um, okay, There's two ways of doing this. I'll show you both ways. So the first way you get rid of a root is to multiply it by itself. But you can't multiply something into a problem unless you even it out. Um, if you're going to multiply the denominator, you have to multiply the numerator as well. So that leaves us with 15 times root 18, which is just 15 root 18. Eight, root 18 times root 18 is 18, so now the root goes away because you multiplied it by itself. But here we can actually break this down. First, we can simplify the 15 over 18. 3 goes into both of those, so 15 divided by 3 is 5. And we could break down the 18 to be 9 times 2, and we reduce the 18 by 3 also. So 15 over 18 becomes 5 sixths. Now we can take the square root of 9, which is 3 times 5, which is 15, root 2 over 6, and finally, we can reduce these two. We could divide bo both of those by 3. So it gives us 5 root 2 over 2, because we divide it top and bottom by 3. So that's our final answer. So that's one way of doing it, is go ahead and multiply top and bottom by the root. Another way of doing it is actually first break down that 18. You can break that down first, actually. So... We said 18 is uh, 9 times 2. So when you take the square root of 9, you get 3. So you have 15 over 3 root 2. Now we can divide those. 15 divided by 3 is 5 over root 2. And now what we're going to do up here with the 18, but everything else is reduced, so that's good. So we're going to multiply by root 2 top and bottom. So our final answer, 5 times root 2 is 5 root 2. Root 2 times root 2 is 2. Notice you get the same answer here. So there's two different ways of handling it. Um, me personally, I like uh, simplifying uh, the root first. 
like the second method that we did. That's the way I usually choose to do it. Uh, so let's do another one. Let's throw in some variables. So we have 6x squared y to the fourth over the square root of 24 x to the third y to the tenth. So again, instead of doing our first method here, which again, they both work, but I think the easier way would be to first simplify uh, the radical here. So I'm going to break down the 24 to be 4 times 6. And since this is an odd exponent, we could say that's x squared times x y to the tenth. And that's all underneath 6 x squared y to the fourth. So now we can take the 4 out which gives us a 2. We could take the x squared out, which becomes an x. Take y to the 10th out, becomes y to the 5th. And we're left with a 6 y, or sorry, 6 x underneath. So here we have 6 x squared y to the 4th on top. Now everything out in front, we can actually reduce that. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. We have x squared on top, x to the 1st on bottom, so I could reduce one power of x top and bottom, which leaves me with just one power of x on top. We have four powers of y on top, five on bottom, so the y's on top will go away. So this 2 got reduced, this x got reduced, and now this y to the fifth becomes just y. And we still have the root 6x there. But again, our answer cannot have a root in the denominator, so we're going to multiply this. Now check this out. You don't multiply by y root uh, 6x, just the root, just the square root. So up top, this doesn't have a root, but this does. So we just have to write 3x root 6x. And here, root 6x times root 6x is 6x, and we still have the y there, times y. So our final step is to reduce. The x's will cancel out. 3 over 6 reduces to 1 over 2. So all we're left with on top is the root 6x. That went away. This became a 2 and we're left with 2y on bottom. Okay? I know it's kind of uh, quite a few steps, but I know you guys can handle it. But again, break down the root. So we, that's what we do. We broke down the root to get to this point. We reduced what we could with the coefficients and the variables. And that's how we got to this point. And then we multiply by root 6 to get the, rad to get the radical out of the denominator. Because root 6 times root 6 is, uh, sorry, root 6x times root 6x is 6x. And then we reduce for our final answer. So that's the second type of problem you're going to see. So a few more. They're going to get a little tougher. So um, try to follow along the best that you can. Example three. <clears throat> we have 27a cubed over 20m to the fifth n to the second. And this root goes over the whole thing, which technically that's the same thing as saying root 27a cubed over root 20 m to the fifth n to the second. Uh, that's the same thing. To put a root over the whole thing is saying same thing as root on top, root on bottom. So again, we're going to simplify each one. So we're going to break down the 27 to be 9 times 3. a cubed becomes a squared times a. On bottom now, we have 20, so that becomes 4 times 5. m to the 5th is m to the 4th times m, and then we still have the n squared there. Remember, you don't have to subtract 1 from the exponent if it's already even, like the square here. So now, we could take the square root of 9, which is 3, the square root of a squared, which is a, which leaves us with 3a on the inside, and on bottom, we could take the square root of 4, which is 2. m to the 4th becomes m to the 2nd. n to the 2nd becomes n. And we're left with a 5m underneath. Okay? So we look to see if we could reduce anything. The 3 and the 2 don't reduce. And these are different variables, so there's nothing really to reduce right now. So the next step is just get rid of that root by multiplying top and bottom by root 5m. So now we have 3a. Now underneath the root, we have 3a times 5m. 
So 3 times 5 is 15, and then we have the AM there. On bottom, notice here this is going to be 2m squared n. Root 5m times root 5m is 5m. So when I multiply across, I have 2 times 5 is 10. m squared times m to the first is m to the third. And then we just have the n there. Okay? Again, the, the good thing about these videos is if you, if I explain something too fast, you can always rewind and watch it again. So we broke it up, broke up the top, reduced or simplified the top uh, radical, simplify the bottom radical, see if you can reduce. In this case, we can't. So we just go in ahead and multiply it by the root 5m top and bottom. So we combine the, the roots up top by multiplying, and down here, the roots ended up canceling out just so you got 5m, and we multiply it by the 2m squared m. And that's how we got our final answer. Okay? All right, the next set of problems. Example 4. We have here 14 over root 5 plus root 3. Now the hard part with this problem is that you can't just go ahead and multiply it by a root 5 or a root 3 because of this plus sign right here. That throws uh, everything off in terms of just being able to multiply like we did here with the root 5m. So what we're going to have to do is you're going to have to multiply by what we call the conjugate we're going to multiply this by root 5, and instead of saying plus, we're going to say minus root 3. Okay? So same thing up top, root 5 minus root 3. And the reason we do that is if we multiply it by this, if we were to FOIL the bottom, the outer and the inner, this gives us a negative root 15, positive root 15. Therefore, the roots will cancel out, and that's what we want. So if this was a minus, to begin with, this parentheses would have to be a plus. These both would. Since it's a plus, this, these both have to be minus. Okay? So now, on top, all I have is 14 times root 5 minus root 3. On the bottom, on this type of problem, if you set it up correctly, all you have to do is the first and the last uh, in terms of the FOIL method. Because in the outer and inner, we'll always cancel each other out. So root 5 times root 5 is 5. Root 3 times negative root 3 is negative 3. So here we have 14 times root 5 minus root 3 over 2. And your final step that you're going to want to do is see if you can reduce. 14 divided by 2 is 7. And you still have the root 5 minus root 3. Okay, so that's our final answer. So again, multiply by the conjugate. That's a plus. Make this one a minus. Okay. Um, I wouldn't distribute on top because remember, we're trying to simplify anyways. We're not trying to um, put more in the parentheses. We're trying to take out. And uh, on the bottom, if you set this up correctly where it's opposite symbols, all you really have to find is the first and the last because the outer and inner will cancel each other out. So finally, we got 5 minus 3, and then we reduce the 14 and 2. That is our final answer. Okay? All right. Let's do one last problem. And we will be done. Example 5. Example 5 says root 3 over 3 plus 1 over 1 minus root 3 over 3. So now we have fractions within a fraction which makes this a little more difficult, but um, still definitely doable. So what we're going to do is top and bottom, sorry, top and bottom, let's just worry about the numerator right now. We need a common denominator up top. So instead of saying 1, I need to write that in terms of thirds. So 3 thirds makes 1, because we need a 3 here. Same thing down here, we need a 3 thirds minus root 3 over 3. So we found a common denominator up top, common denominator on bottom. And like we, did, we said before, if you have the same denominator up top and bottom, we can just cross those out. So now we have root 3 plus 3 over 3 minus root 3. But we can't have a root in the bottom. 
And since there is a symbol in between the two terms, we can't just multiply this by root 3. So we're going to have to do, again, just like we did in the last example, multiply by the conjugate. So it's 3 plus root 3. Okay? 3 plus root 3. Now if we want to simplify, we can actually FOIL on top. So root 3 times 3 is 3 root 3. That's first. Last, root 3 times root 3 is 3. Okay. Um, inner, 3 times 3 is 9. And last, 3 times root 3 is 3 root 3. On bottom, since we multiply by the conjugate, all we have to worry about is first, 3 times 3 is 9, and last, root 3 times, or negative root 3 times positive root 3 is negative 3. So all we have to do is um, combine like terms, 3 plus 9 is 12, 3 root 3 plus 3 root 3 is 6 root 3, 9 minus 3 is 6, and yes, we can uh, reduce both of these numbers. Again, you can only reduce both of them if they both go into this. If you can reduce both with the denominator. So 12 divided by 6 is 2. 6 divided by 6 is 1. So 1 root 3. So that's how you do um, this type of problem. Again, find a common denominator on top. Find a common denominator on bottom. And since they're all 3's for denominators, we can cross those out. We got to this point right here. So cover that up. So we had to multiply this by 3 plus root 3. And whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. We went ahead and foiled on top. We foiled on bottom. And then we reduce. Combine like terms and reduce. So this is how we deal with quotients of square roots. So again, good luck with that. Quotients of square roots. And keep watching the video as many times as you need. And ask questions at school if you have more questions. All right. Well, good luck with that. Bye.